Welcome to another tutorial on complex numbers. This is the fourth tutorial on complex numbers as part of the Edexcel Further F, uh, Pure 1 Maths A level. As always, we take a look at the specification to see where we are. So far, we've defined the complex number, we've talked about it as a real and imaginary part, we've added, multiplied, and divided them, and we've used them to factor and solve complicated uh, polynomial equations. We're going to go back a bit now to a few things that we, we missed out on the way forward. We're going to talk a little bit about here about the geometrical representation of complex numbers in the Argon diagram and we're going to do the geometrical representation of sums, products and quotients of complex numbers. And I'll tidy up the last remaining bits in one last video. Okay, this is very straightforward. but. Firstly, we are going to need a geometrical representation of complex numbers. Now, how do we represent the real numbers? Well, we represent the real numbers by the number line, and the number line looks something like this. Zero tends to be in the middle, the positive numbers to the right-hand side, the negative numbers to the left-hand side. Um, and that's how we show all real numbers. However, how can we represent the complex numbers now? We know the complex numbers are a bigger set of numbers and the real numbers are within them. How can we represent the complex numbers and preserve the idea of the real number line we've got? After all, all real numbers are complex, they just have the imaginary part equal to zero. Well, this representation was named after a French bookkeeper, a mathematician called Jean-Robert Argand. Okay? And his representation is now called the Argan diagram, and this is what we use to represent complex numbers. Okay, what does it look like? Well, let's take a look. The Argan diagram. The Argan diagram is a bit like Cartesian coordinates. We have the real number line as the x-axis. This is our normal real number line. But going in the vertical direction, we have an imaginary axis. So we can represent any number on this plane. For example, if we want to draw the number two, uh, the complex number two plus five i, well, that's telling us that we're two across on the real numbers and one, two, three, four, five up in the imaginary plane. So this here would be our z, and that would be two plus five i. And that's how we can draw any complex numbers on an Argand diagram. Now, one thing to just uh, one thing to just say here is that a complex number can either be thought of as a point in the Argand diagram, or it also can be thought of as a vector from the origin uh, to that point. Okay, so a complex number can be thought of on the one hand as the point. But it can also be thought of as this vector here. If I call this point here P, Z can also be thought of as the vector that goes from O to P, as well as a point in the Argand diagram space. Now, what if I asked to draw its complex conjugate, Z uh, to minus 5i? Well, where would that be on the complex plane? It's still 2 across, but it's 5 down this time. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So this would be the complex conjugate to subtract 5i. And again, that can be thought of as a point in space, or it can be thought of as a vector from the origin uh, to that position. OK? And the key thing to say here, there's a couple of notes to make. The first note is to say the x-axis is just the real number line as it always was. Complex conjugates are just reflections of each other in the x-axis. Okay, And the last thing to say is a complex number can be thought of as a point in the plane or a vector from the origin. So any complex number we can think of can be positioned within our Argon diagram in this way. Complex conjugates are reflections of each other in the x-axis. And the x-axis is, after all, just the real number line. So there's our Argon diagram. Let's do some uh, questions. Um, just going back to our 
syllabus here, it talks about we have to represent complex numbers in the Argon diagram. We've talked about that. And the key thing is that we have to be able to represent sums, products, and quotients of complex numbers in the Argon diagram. So let's do one of each. Right, here's an example. We have a complex number 4 plus i and a complex number 2 plus 3i. We're asked to show z1 and z2 in the Argon diagram. And we're also asked to show the sum of z1 and z2. Okay, so let's just do a bit of work in. Let's, z1 was 4 plus i. Z2 is 2 plus 3i. And let's just do a bit of work in. What does z1 plus z2 turn out to be? Well, it turns out to be 6 plus 4i. Okay, so we're going to label each of these in the Argon diagram. 4 plus i. 1, 2, 3, 4 across, 1 up. That's z1. 2 plus 3i. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 2 plus 3i, that's z2. And this one here, 6 plus 4i, the sum of them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, and 4. This point here would be z1 plus z2. Okay? Now the key thing, uh, uh, thing to notice here, here's our vector to z1, here's our vector to z2. You'll notice that um, Z1 plus Z2, actually, if I copy this, if I clone this here, move it over here, and I clone this here, and move it here, you'll notice that Z1, Z2, the complex number Z1, Z2, is always the corner of the parallelogram formed with the sides of Z1, Z2. So it's the corner of a parallelogram that would make um, Z1 and Z2 and Z1 plus Z2 into a parallelogram. So that always works for us and that's the geometrical representation there. Okay, time for you to have a go. Pause the video, have a go at this. Okay, working through it. Um, what is Z1 plus Z2 in this case? Z1 plus Z2 would be equal to 5 plus 2i. So let's draw out these. 6 minus 2i, it would be 6 minus 2i. We'd be here for Z1. Uh, Z2 would be minus 1 plus 4i. be over here. So that would be Z2. And we're saying that Z1 plus Z2 is 5 plus 2i here. So that's Z1 plus Z2. Let's check our idea about the corner of a parallelogram still works. There's the vector to Z1. There's the vector to Z2. If I copy this, put it there. If I copy this, and put it there. Z1, Z2 is indeed the corner of the parallelogram that would be formed. So it makes sense and it fits in with what we just talked about. Okay, time to have a go at subtraction. Um, we've got a complex number here, another complex number, and we want to show those both those complex numbers and their difference. So what Z1 subtract Z2? Well, it would be 2 subtract 4, which would be minus 2, and it would be 5i subtract 2i, which would be 3i. Okay, so now we can draw each of these. 2 plus 5i, 2 plus 5i is here. Uh, 4 plus 2i, 4 plus 2i would be here. And z1 minus z2 is negative 2, and 3i would be here. That's z1 subtract z2. Okay, so let's draw in our vectors here. The vector from uh, o to z1 is there. The vector from o to z2 is there. Now, how does the Z1 subtract Z2 work? Well, it's kind of like adding a negative Z2. If instead of having a positive Z2, we instead uh, had, uh, we had the same uh, size of vector, okay, but we instead, we change the direction of it so it was going this way okay that would be like negative z2 
then it would be like adding z1 and adding to it negative z2. So it would be the corner of a parallelogram. But the corner of the parallelogram formed by adding z1 to negative z2. Okay? So you, you wouldn't need to talk about this in the exam, but you just would need to be able to easily identify um, where z1, z2 is, as so. z1 minus z2 even. Okay, time for you to have a go. Okay, I'm going to draw z1 is 6 plus 4i here. Z2 is 4 plus 7i, so it's 4 plus 7i, be out the page up here, Z2, and Z1 minus Z2 would be 2 is subtract 3i, so 2 subtract 3i would be somewhere as here, Z1 subtract Z2. Okay, and let's just see if what we talked about earlier works. That vector to there, that vector to there, we want the negative of Z2. So we're going to go backwards this way, like so. And it would indeed form the corner of a parallelogram as such. It forms the corner of a parallelogram with the complex number Z1, and if you add negative Z2. Okay, so that's how it looks. Next, uh, we need to be able to do a multiplication. So here's our complex number Z1. Here's our complex number Z2. You better draw them in. There's Z1. And Z2 is 3 plus 2i. It's up here, Z2. The question is, what does Z1 multiplied by Z2 look like? Well, Z1 multiplied by Z2, you just work it out. It's 1 plus i multiplied by 3 plus 2i. Okay, multiplying out the brackets here you would get yourself 3 plus 2i plus 3i subtract 2 and you would get yourself 1 plus 5i and this point here would be 1 plus 5i would be up here somewhere so this would be z1 times z2 and that would be z1 that would be z2 and that there is Z1 multiplied by Z2. Okay, time for you to have a go yourself. Your turn. Okay, let's mark off this. 1 minus i would be down here, Z1. 3 minus 2i, 3 minus 2i would be here. And Z1 times Z2. Well, Z1 multiplied by Z2 is 1 minus i, 3 minus 2i. Multiply that out, you get 3, subtract 2i, subtract 3i, and then you would get yourself uh, subtract 2. So you would get 1 minus 5i, and 1 minus 5i, 1 minus 5i would be somewhere like here. So this would be Z1, Z2 and the vectors would look as so. Okay, and we're done there. The last thing I suppose we need to be able to check we can do uh, with quite a fair bit of ease would be to do a division. So we've done everything but division, so we're going to finish with checking we can actually do a division and show where it is on the argon diagram. Here we go. There's our complex numbers and we're trying to work out what Z1 divided by Z2 looks like. Well, Z1 is 1 plus i. Z2 is 2, subtract 2i. So Z2 is something down here. And Z1 divided by Z2, what does that look like? Well, Z1 divided by Z2 is equal to 1 plus i over 2 minus 2i. Now, you'll remember with div division of complex numbers, the way you do it, is you, it's kind of like rationalizing said, you multiply top and bottom by the complex conjugate, conjugate of the denominator. So you multiply top and bottom by two plus two i. Okay, 
And what would you get when you do that? Well, you would get yourself, um, on the top, you would get 2 plus 2i plus 2i subtract 2. And on the bottom, you would get 4 plus 4. So therefore, on the top, you would get 4i over 8 in total, and therefore, you would get a half i. And where does a half i, uh, where is a half i here? Well, a half i is somewhere like here. So z1 over z2 is this here, that vector there. Z1 is that vector there, and Z2 is that vector there. Okay? And lastly, to finish off, you have a turn at um, doing a division and showing it on the complex, uh, on the argon diagram. So try this one. Okay, Z1 is 1 minus i, is here. Z2 is 3 plus 2i, it's here, Z2. And z1 over z2, well, that is equal to 1 minus i divided by 3 plus 2i. Remember how you do a division. You multiply top and bottom by the uh, complex conjugate of the denominator. So you multiply by 3, subtract 2i, and 3, subtract 2i. What would you get? Well, you would get on the top, you would get 3, subtract 2i, subtract 3i and then you would get subtract 2, all divided by 9 plus 4. So you would get yourself 1, subtract 5i, all divided by 13, and that's kind of like a 13, subtract 5 thirteenths i. Okay, where's that on the complex uh, plane? Well, it's hard to put in exactly, but it's 1 thirteenth, and it's minus 5 thirteenths, it's somewhere like there, okay? And that would be our z1 over z2, there, okay? And we're done, that's that's all. We have uh, learned about how to position uh, complex numbers on the argon diagram. We have learned how to do addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. We've re recapped on that, and we've shown how to put those answers onto the argon diagram as well. I suggest you read chapter 1, page 10 to 14, work through those examples, and then do everything in exercise 1D. Then watch the next video where we use the Argon diagram to find a new representation of complex numbers called the modulus and argument form. Thank you for watching.